This episode of Pen Point starts right now. This episode of Pen Point is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook at www.audiblepodcast.com slash penpoint. You know, this show is sometimes topical. I talk about political stuff, what's happening in the world. So I think it's about time I talked about Nixon. You know, Nixon. Richard Milhouse Nixon, the uh, president who resigned as president of the United States in my lifetime. I was a child when Nixon resigned. And because of the amazing, amazing thing of the inner tube, how everything is on the inner tube now, and you can watch, that's Mojo Nixon's term. He calls it inner tube for the internet, and I like that. Love Mojo. Um, and Nixon, see, ties in. Everything ties in that I'm doing. It's all a very elaborate plan. I'm not just talking out my ass. Um, when Nixon resigned, um, right before Nixon resigned, my dad and I had a lot of arguments about Nixon. And the arguments about Nixon were me, as a young man, or child, telling my uh, father that uh, Nixon was uh, a crook, Nixon was a bad guy, Nixon had done things, a lot of things that were illegal. My information came from reading, you know, Abby Hoffman, Jerry Rubin, listening to Neil Young, uh, reading the East Village Other, you know, uh, trying, living in Massachusetts, trying to be a New Yorker, trying to be sophisticated, uh, trying to be a radical. I had all this stuff about Nixon. I hated him. And I really, really, really should have been wrong. Uh, everybody who's in junior high and high school should be trashing whatever president they have for all sorts of reasons. They really should be. They should be going against authority. They should be trashing the president. And they should be wrong. And years later, they should get together with their moms and dads and say, remember when I was trashing Obama? Who? I was so wrong. They should be saying that. And when I was trashing Nixon, I should have grown up and found that I was wrong. What were the chances that a Greenfield, Massachusetts, high school child was going to be right about the President of the United States being uh, a fucking whack job and, uh, and, uh, and a crook and bad? Um, zero. But turns out I was right. I was right, my dad was wrong, and that's, that's horrible, and I feel terrible about it. And then about 20 years ago, I saw this thing called outtakes from the Nixon resignation speech. Outtakes. And uh, you should watch this. They'll put it up here. They'll put up the outtakes, because I'm sure no one has the rights to it. They'll put up the rights to the, uh, they'll put up the, the, the link at least, but maybe they're even showing it right beside me here. It's Nixon's outtakes resignation. Uh, outtakes from the resignation speech. I saw it, and it blew my mind. Now, at that point, as I get older, I ended up getting very interested in Nixon. And Frank Gannon, who was the producer on The Letterman Show, uh, wrote, along with Diane Sawyer uh, and Nixon, RN, the, um, the, the book by the crook, the um, uh, autobiography of Richard Nixon. He wrote it, and he was then working on Letterman, which means he was working with me, and I was talking to him all the time. And I read the whole RN, the book by the crook. I read the whole thing, and it was life-changing. And I'll, you know, I can talk about that another time, about the part of the Nixon book that really blew my mind. But this outtake was Nixon about to resign. And when you watch it, Nixon, uh, it starts with him saying, um, why don't you stay in here? You're a pretty good-looking young fella, or something like that. It's not word for word. Hey, you're better looking than I am. Why don't you stay here? <laughs> What he's saying is to someone I was told, I'm not sure it's not said in the outtakes, was the sound guy. Okay, so you're in the heaviest room, I think, in the history of television. The president of the United States of America is about to resign, and there are TV cameras, and he's sitting there, and he makes some jokes, and you'll watch this about, don't take pictures of me picking my nose or something. I'm afraid you'll catch me picking my nose. <laughs> and you know that his biggest problem is not pictures of him picking his nose. The biggest problem is he's about to resign as president of the United States of America. Woo! Heavy, 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 heavy. And everybody, I'm sure, in the room. I mean, I've been in rooms where you're just trying to do a like a nude scene, and people get really, really heavy. I can't imagine a scene in a room where you're going to resign. Mean, imagine if right now there are people in this room with me, and I was going to resign as president of the United States of America. First of all, that's amazing, because who would ever get me as president of the United States of America? But if we've gone that far, I guess it's not that heavy. But let's say you're qualified to be president of the United States, and then you are resigning. And Nixon 
is making jokes. Look at my nose. What he's essentially saying to the guy there is, you're a young man, why don't you come on TV? People would rather see you on camera than see ugly old me resign. Then he talks about picking his nose. Look at my nose. And then when he does this sound check, he reads part of the resignation speech. You know, the heaviest, most unpleasant speech of his life, he reads into sound check. Well, you're on a level, don't you? Yes, yes. Good evening. This is the 37th time I have spoken to you from this office where so many decisions have been made. How heavy is that? And, uh, and so I've talked to um, Billy West about this, who uh, is the best, uh, best voice guy in the world. He's like voice of the M&Ms, and he was, you know, Ren and, Ren and Stimpy. But that's old stuff. He's also, he's everything. And he's a fabulous voice guy. And very, very funny and very smart. He also used to be on Stern. And, uh, you know, Billy's saying, how crazy is Nixon that he's smiling and happy before this. And I think that this is what made Nixon, until he went crazy, qualified to be the president of the United States of America. I bet if you put Obama, Clinton, Bush, Ford, Lincoln, any, any of the cars, uh, into a room with TV cameras, we've put Lincoln into a room with TV cameras, it would really flip him out. But, what I love about it is what that shows, what the resignation speech shows, is not how crazy Nixon was, to me. Nixon was very crazy, very bad, definitely should have gotten out of office, should have never gotten into office, everything's bad. We all agree about that. Don't be writing comments about how Penn's defending Nixon. That's not the point of this. The point is that him joking around before resigning as President of the United States of America is evidence that at one time he was fit to be President of the United States of America. I've been on Saturday Night Live. Live. You know, I've been on Dancing with the Stars, sucking on Dancing with the Stars, and being thrown off Dancing with the Stars in front of, you know, 15 million people. I have done stuff that is high pressure on television, but this is a whole order of magnitude. And any of us, you know, me, any of you, if we were asked to resign as President of the United States of America, we would not make jokes with the cameraman beforehand because our heart would explode in our chest and we would die. Or we would shit our spleen out onto the floor and that would kill us. And what I love about this resignation thing, and you should watch it, the outtakes, is that it shows how heavy a president how heavy a room a president, of course he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be able to be in a room and be, you know, uh, uh, clear while, uh, while, you know, the country's being attacked and he's the commander in chief. Uh, he should be able to do that. So, um, it's just an amazing thing. And I don't think it shows that Nixon was crazy. I think that it shows that there was still part of Nixon that was presidential. And you can bet your ass, whatever you think of Obama, he could resign and be joking beforehand because these people that get to be president uh, are so fucking tough. And I just think this little piece of resignation uh, pre-footage, real footage, I'm using the word footage because I'm 110 fucking years old. Uh, this video, little piece of video, really does show that uh, to be president of the United States, it's really hard. So this whole point of this is, it's really hard to be president of the United States. And in case you didn't know that, you learned that from me. It's an amazing, amazing video. Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Audible has over 75,000 titles to choose from to be downloaded to your iPod, MP3 player, and played back anywhere, anytime. Choose from books in every genre, science fiction, thrillers, drama, comedy, business, history, and more. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash penpoint to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, go to audiblepodcast.com slash penpoint for your free audiobook. Hey, you're better looking than I am. Why don't you stay here? <laughs> Blondes, they say, photograph better than brunettes. That's true or not? Uh, you're, you are blonde, aren't you? Redhead? <laughs> we were same. <laughs> Let me see that. Get these lights properly. Uh, yeah. I, my eyes always have. You will find if I get just past 60, that's enough. Thanks. My friend Ollie always wants to take a lot of pictures. Of <laughs> I'm afraid you'll catch me picking my nose. <laughs>
Oh, you're on a level, don't you? Yes, yes. Good evening. This is the 37th time I have spoken to you from this office, where so many decisions have been made that shape the history of our nation. Picking my nose.